The FIFA 2010 World Cup is nearly upon us, the first time Africa has hosted the event and a chance for the continent to shine. But the odds of an African country winning the tournament are stacked against them. One major cause is malnutrition, which hampers the continent's chances of producing world-class football players. World Cup fever is running high in South Africa. The event is a major chance for both the continent and the country to showcase itself to the world, and even a chance to dream about African glory in the tournament. But at FIFA's first medical centre of excellence in Africa in Johannesburg, there's less optimism. There may be plenty of grassroots players awash with natural talent in Africa, but few will become stars, because poverty and poor nutrition hold them back. If your nutrition is lacking, you're not going to have the energy, you're not going to have the speed, the agility um, and the endurance to be able to perform at your optimum. That's why a program in Alexandra tries to channel children's enthusiasm for the game. Here football lessons run in parallel with lessons on a healthy diet. Nutrition is a huge part of, 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 of our work here in Alex and throughout Play Soccer. Um, we work in places where some kids don't get a meal every day. You know, a meal is such a luxury. As a matter of fact, the schools around in Alex and in other parts of um, Joburg, they will provide one meal, one lunch meal at school because they know that that's the only meal the kids are going to get. One African in four suffers from malnutrition, while four in ten children under five are stunted. That's 57 million youngsters who are short for their age. It's a real issue that has ramifications far beyond football. If we don't deal with the challenge of nutrition in pregnant mothers and children under two, if we fail to deal with that nutrition challenge in that period, then even if that family wins the lotto, the human potential of that child is permanently affected. That's why African leaders and international health experts came together in Johannesburg recently. They want to build a grassroots movement to offer hope to the next generation. Nutrition is a subject that appears like a new subject in many of these nations. But it's a very important subject. And I wish many countries, all the countries of Africa, could have nutrition as ranking high in the policy making uh, organization. I wish they could make it very important because it's the beginning. If you don't have your people fed properly, where are you going to? What is the future of that nation? We have a monumental task in front of us. It will take us actually 20, 50 years to overcome completely malnutrition. It is true. We need 45 food. We need to make it not only 45, but to make sure that it gets to everyone. One vital player is the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition or GAIN, which is implementing public-private partnerships to fortify staple foods across the continent. South Africa has led the way, but wants industry to reach more children. It passed legislation requiring millers to add vitamins and minerals to flour, the country has now successfully combated diseases associated with poor diet, such as spina bifida and neural tube defects. What we know is that um, low-income people tend to consume only a few foodstuffs. And uh, in South Africa, maize meal is the main one, uh, as well as uh, brown bread. And uh, if we add uh, essential vitamins and minerals to those, then we will be improving uh, the, uh, the, the, the nutritional content of the food that those people eat. Yet with Africa facing higher food prices, climate change, and the fallout from the global economic crisis, there's concern that the continent won't even be able to meet the UN's Millennium Development Goals, one of which aims to halve the number suffering from malnutrition by 2015. One of the Millennium Development Goals is to reduce child mortality. And so if you want to reduce it, this is, you know, a third of that is driven by undernutrition. So how do we get at that? And I think policymakers are starting to recognize that. 
Um, so there, so there's definitely progress. It's progress that health experts are starting to see in a young generation of African children through food fortification. It helps that good nutrition now has a strong ally, the game of football. Sport can serve as prevention of many of the health problems that we have. Uh, and so if we can develop in our country to make healthy lifestyle a priority, including all of uh, the health challenges that we have, then also we'll ultimately reduce the expenditure and the focus on providing uh, the remedial side of health. Certainly, if Africa is as enthusiastic about football as it is about addressing malnutrition, then with the impetus built by this event and efforts by companies and alliances alike, future World Cup glory could be easily within its grasp.